good to be here this morning. Especially good to be here this morning. <laughs> I must say that. Amen. Some of you know what I'm talking about. But it's good. I'm glad that you are here this morning. Uh, it's good to have Brother Jordan here this morning. Amen. He's uh, he, uh, travel a, a nice little distance, but he came in last night. and So uh, he should be raring to go this morning. Probably got all that beauty sleep going on, you know. I, I don't know, you know, how good it done, but you know, <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> hey, man, I know I'm missing a lot of it. <laughs> Praise God, but God's been so good to us, Amen. God's been so good, but it's it's good having Him here. I want you to just give the Lord and the servant a hand as He uh, Steve 
placed him at 50 something. Guessing this man was a fellow believer, Steve leaned over to engage him in a conversation. Looks to me like you're memorizing something, he said. The man said, no, actually I was praying, the man said. So Steve began to introduce himself. He said, I believe in prayer too. Well, I have a specific assignment, said the man with the goatee. And Steve asked, what was that? I'm praying for the downfall of Christian pastors. Of course, Steve said I would certainly fit into that category. And he asked, is my name on that list? He said, not my list. The man replied. Today, I want to briefly highlight something that I believe has always been going on, but I believe has intensified over the last several years. And I believe there is an unseen battle going on in the spiritual realm. There is a reality that I believe that is true spiritually. We are at war. And some people are afraid to preach about this because when we talk about the unseen battle, we talk about Satan and demonic principalities and rulers of darkness, we think that we're giving too much place to the devil. And I do realize there are churches that believe that there are devils behind every single corner and every bush and in the bathroom. And some people bring them to church with them. Amen. <laughs> However, there is this reality that we must come to as Christians. It is that we are wrestling, we are struggling with spiritual adversity. Amen. I'm going to say that again. We are struggling with spiritual adversaries. Amen. So what does it really mean? Because I'm going to break these words down. Maybe you've never taken the time to look at them and really allow them to seep in your heart. Do I preach revivals? Yes, because I'm also a preacher teacher. How many of you know it's good to hear the talk word of God as well so we can have it implanted into our souls? And so I want to break these words down for you, not because you may not know what they are, but because I believe they're extremely relevant today. And the first word is wrestle, which means to struggle, fight, have conflict, or have contest with. So spiritually speaking, we don't just fight against the will of the flesh. We don't wrestle against just mere human power. When you think about wrestling, some of you may think about the WWE where Hulk Hogan or Macho Man Randy Savage gets in the ring and they bounce off rubber and pump, pump, pump each other up and beat each other's faces in and wrestle back and forth and beat each other to the pulp. But how many of you know that in the spirit realm, there's a lot of wrestling going on. A wrestling match between good and evil. A wrestling match, yes, between God and Satan for the souls of mankind. I believe we are in a battle of life. Amen. Eternity is at stake. We are in what I call in the spirit realm, hand-to-hand -hand combat and a close proximity. See, in the natural, we have things like martial arts where we have people like Chuck Norris that can do a front snap, he can hit you in the nose and drop you like a flop. Anybody know who Chuck Norris is? There's a bunch of Chuck Norris jokes out there. But the truth is, is that the enemy that you are fighting against is better than Chuck Norris. But I want to tell you today who your enemy is and who your enemy is not. Your biggest enemy is not your pastor that doesn't preach what you want to hear. Come on now. Come on. Your enemy is not the church down the road or even the person that sits by you in church today. Amen. Your biggest enemy is not a family member that chooses to to keep on having conflict in the family and continue to sow discord. Your biggest enemy is the devil and you will have to be in the power of the Holy Spirit and have the strength of the Almighty God to not only resist him, but have the power of God to defeat him. Come on, give the Lord a hand of the praise here. But something I've also learned 
name is true today is that there are people playing around with spiritual principalities and powers. And they try to defeat them in their own strength. How many of you know you can't defeat the enemy in your own strength? Amen. Can't do it. Amen. You'll end up like the seven sons of Sceva who tried to use the name of Jesus, who knew about Jesus but didn't have the authority of Jesus. And then the demon-possessed man begins to beat them up and drag them across the streets. How many of you know that if you're not full of the Holy Ghost, Satan will embarrass you? The battle is against what? Powers of evil. And this appears to be indicating two different aspects of evil power. And I find it striking that the original phrase is powerful because it says against the world rulers of this darkness. Against the spiritual powers of wickedness in heavenly places. Notice what the text does not say. The text does not say spiritual powers in earthly places. The text says spiritual powers in heavenly places. If you know what that means, there is a hierarchy in the spiritual realm. Just like in the United States military, there is rank and file. Well, guess what there is in the spiritual realm? There is rank. And five, there are chief rulers that are first in rank in demonic power. There are principalities or fallen angelic beings or powers that are trying to influence this world. Did you know that kings, rulers, and even presidents have been influenced by spiritual powers? Influenced even by demonic powers and didn't even... Know it? Why is this? Because I believe that the enemy is very strategic and organized. As a matter of fact, the enemy may even be more organized and strategic than the church at times. How do I know this? We come in here late half the time. We don't come in praying. We don't come in fasting. We don't come in praying in the spirit. We go through the motions of church and we wonder why at times God doesn't move because we're not moving the way God has designed us to move as the church. However, I believe this as well. The enemy's so strategic, he knows how to turn brother against brother. Church member against church member. The enemy knows if he can Unify the church against what God wants. He can keep the church from functioning the way God designed it to function. However, I believe God is going to bring the church into unity in the right way, whether you like it or not, whether the devil likes it, whether every principality ever likes it, because God is bringing the church for such a time as this. It didn't say that Satan would never fight you. Satan can fight your church and your pastor. Did you know that? But you know what Matthew tells us? That the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Because 
make you think about Satan. However, the scripture is clear that there are powers, spiritually speaking, operating. It's interesting to note that one of the first terms used is cosmic powers. What in the world does this have to do with anything? What does celestial bodies, what, what does the second heaven have to do with anything? You know what the second half of heaven is? It's the stars, it's the universe, it's it's the, it's the, 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 the in-between the, the earth and the actual realm we call heaven. What does this have to do with anything? Well, the cosmic powers, demonic powers are behind the scenes trying to control this world. And this word cosmic power in the Greek language is cosmo crater. Why is this important? Well, how many of you ever heard of the red bat hammer? Come on, have any of you ever heard of the red bat handle? I bet you didn't know that Satanists have something called the Orphic Hymns of Satan. They have their own version of it. And Satanists actually sing and declare the praises to the cosmic, demonic powers of the universe. So I find it extremely interesting that this word cosmo or cosmos is being projected. While you and I are praising and worshiping the one true God who created the heavens and the earth, there are people full of Satan and influenced by the devil that are singing praises to the universe and trees and everything else that did not give life. But this church has come to worship the Demon 
possess, but they can be oppressed and impressed. So there's a lot of teaching on the well, child of God can be possessed by Satan. You won't find that in the Word of God. But they can be oppressed. They can be impressed and be used unwarily. Why are you saying this today, preacher? I have never seen an unchurched person other than witches and warlocks mess up a church. I've seen people impressed by spirits that are supposed to be saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost that have jacked up churches from the floor. Yeah. Why are you saying that today, preacher? I don't want to hear that today. I, that I could be being used by the enemy unawarely. You just keep on having your bad little attitude. And go around propagating everything you don't like about the church. And keep on gossiping and listening to lies and slander. You keep on being bitter about something that happened 25 years ago. And allowing your heart to be hard. And see what doors that unlocks for the enemy to destroy your life. You may be leaving doors open to principalities and you didn't even know. So what is this battle against? Darkness, morally speaking, ethical depression, perversion. What I've learned today in this day and time is that the world would love for preachers that are actually filled with the Spirit and preaching the Word of God to start watering down this book. Come on. Now, I may meddle just a little bit, but it's okay. Because I ain't got a church they can take from me. Cleveland can't do it right now. So guess what? I'm going to do it anyways. But some church folk, I'm just going to say it since we're in the South, want to accuse anointed preachers for not watering down the truth. And they are preaching something outdated. There's a notion out there in a lot of churches that there are parts of the Bible that are outdated. They're not relevant. <clears throat> but I've come by to tell the skeptic and the critic that the preacher did not write the word of God. Right. Amen. God spoke it and faithful men influenced by the Holy Spirit wrote it down. And a true preacher of the gospel will not water down this book to make you feel better for your sin. A true preacher of the word of God under the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Spirit will let you become convicted of your sin when you will run from it and no longer do it again. I believe it's time that the church stop entertaining powers where people go around and start listening to water down garbage and start standing on the rock of ages yeah. on Jesus yeah. Christ I stand the solid rock I stand all over the ground and seek his dead. I'm going to tell you that in the last several months of my life I didn't have nothing else to begin to stand on but this word today. Yeah. Yeah. Let's 
church that might have been under demonic oppression might be set free. I'm speaking to somebody here today. I don't know who I'm talking to, but there's some people been in this church for a long time that the reason why they've allowed certain stuff and certain things are happening in their life ain't because you get a, bad, a lot of bad decisions. It's because you ain't a gateway to the enemy and the enemy has been wreaking havoc on your life because you simply will not submit to the word of God. It's the truth. Deal with evil forces or spiritual forces of evil. What does this really mean? This could mean pain, labor, struggle, great effort, and process to cause you trouble. I believe there's some pain in this life that is caused by the fallen world we live in. Some pain is caused by the poor decisions we make. However, according to this text, there is some pain and trouble caused by forces behind the scenes. This can also mean pain ridden evil. Derived from the word which means to cause pain, pure and simple, resulting in toil, drudge, and it makes you feel bad like a criminal. When there are demonic spirits operating behind the scenes, there's going to be some pain. Whoever told you that in this Life, you're not going to have any tribulation, and that once you become a Christian, that everything's going to be perfect. They're lying to you. But in this text, we're finding that there is some pain that's caused by the enemy. Makes you feel like you are a criminal. The truth is, the enemy doesn't want you to live like Jesus. But he wants you to live like a criminal. If you are a child of God, you are no longer a slave to sin. Amen. You are no longer in bondage. You are set free. You are free to live in the power and the demonstration of the Holy Spirit. I don't know what lies you've been li listening to from the enemy that says, that you're not good enough. I don't know the lies of the enemy that keeps on trying to infiltrate and say to you that you're still in bondage. But today, who the sun sets free yeah. is free indeed. Today is a day of freedom. Today is a day of salvation. Amen. You no longer have to feel like you're in chains and a criminal because you are a child of God. You are a son and a daughter of the most high king. You don't have to worry about being living like you are. But you know what surprises me today? Is the amount of Americans in the church that don't believe that there are real principalities operating in the world. Amen. According to George Barna, a leading church consultant, 56 percent of Americans believe in Satan and believe that he is a real spiritual being and influences people's lives. You say, well, you just said there's a lot of people that don't believe. Well, there's a lot of people who do believe as well. The truth is there are actually about the same people that believe that there is a real devil. More Americans believe in a real Satan than some that believe there is a real God. Satan and his forces are real. Amen. Amen. They're evil. They are powerful. Satan is actually found in the Word of God. He's a real being indicated by Scripture. Satan is not some 
mystical fairy that you read about in your bedtime stories. Satan is not like the Easter bunny who jumps from church to church or like the leprechauns on St. Patrick's Day that some still chase to find the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Yes, there are still people every time they see a rainbow that still go try to see if there's a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. The truth is Satan will use you and abuse you if you will let him. Satan will speak lies to you if you will allow him to. Satan will tell you that you are a failure. Satan will tell pastors that you're not doing a good enough job because people aren't showing up on Sunday mornings. People are praying. People aren't fasting. People are not cooperating. Satan will take the circumstances of life and tell you you should take your life and life isn't worth living. But praise be unto God. I came to cancel the assignment of the enemy. Today you're going to make a decision to stop listening to the voice of the enemy. And start hearing the voice of God. Some of you need to hear that again today. You're going to stop listening to the lies of Satan. You're going to close every other door in your life. One preacher told it to me like this recently. Imagine in your head that you've got a bunch of keys in your hand. And you're going down a hallway where there's a bunch of different doors. And you begin to start closing every other door in your life that is of the voice of God. Because there's a lot of voices that sound similar. But if you're a child of God, his sheep know his voice. So what you've got to do in this season of your life and as a church is you're going to have to go down this hallway called life. This door is telling me to kill myself. This door is telling me to fight the pastor. This door is telling me to be mad what happened 25 years. Shut every single lying voice and door in your life and leave open that one door like in the back back there that has the voice and the presence of God. And then when you hear the voice and the presence of God, you'll be able to stick it up. Oh, that's the voice of Satan. I shouldn't go down that path. That's the voice of the enemy. He wants me to take my life. No, because greater is he that's in us than he that is in this world. Will you choose the right door? Come on, give the Lord some praise. Here's a truth that I have found. <clears throat> Some of you may think, well, does this preacher even know what he's talking about? Some of your best messages are the ones that you lived. Yeah. And I will tell you, the more you make it, you're called to make an impact for the Lord, the more that the devil is going to fight you. Perhaps today, maybe what you're going through isn't because you did a bunch of bad things. You're living for God. You are praying. You are hearing the voice of God. Maybe today, what you're going through is not because you did a bunch of things wrong. Maybe the reason why hell is fighting this church so long, his pastor, his clerk, his leadership, this body of believers, because after the wrestling and fighting, <laughs> the victories of 
about to be so great. Amen. This ministry is about to be so anointed. The church is going to be so impactful. Maybe the reason why you've been going through some hell right now is not because you're a bad person or you're not serving God. Maybe it's because you are trying to serve God. And so if this pastor is doing what he's supposed to, he ain't paid me to say this because he's probably not going to only pay for half my lunch anyway. So that's what's going to happen today. But I'm here to tell you today, today is the day we come behind him today and say, you know what, today we cancel the assignment of the end. He always starts at the top. If he can destroy Sister Frida and Pastor Buper, guess what he's going to do? He's going to come triple his way on on down. So you better start praying for your pastor. You better start counseling the Simon and the enemy against his life. You better start unifying and coming together and watch what God will do. Jesus. 
Amen. The gospel according to Luke says it this way. In the 10th chapter, verse 18 to 19. And he said to them, I was watching Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Notice this is Jesus talking. But then he says something that I think is paramount for the church. Behold, I have given you authority. I have given you. Didn't say just the preacher. I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing will injure you. What does it really mean to tread on scorpions and serpents and all that? To tread on serpents means a Preservation from danger. If you were to tread on a reptile that would otherwise injure you, God says, I can even keep you safe from the reptile. If you go among bitter and malignant enemies that would seek your life, guess what God says if you can tread on scorpions? He said, I will preserve you. And my question to you today is this, is are you listening more to the slither of the serpent than the voice of God? This serpent has, because you've listened to it so long, wrapped itself around you like a boa constrictor and has begun to start suck the life out of you. And you don't even know it. But if you operate in the authority of the Holy Spirit, you know what's going to happen? Hallelujah. He's going to preserve you from the snake. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Oh my God. Feel the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I saw an image just a second ago <laughs> of a snake trying to wrap itself around the church. Come on. But then Jesus steps in and breaks yeah. off the serpent yeah. off the church. Yeah. Started meddling with some stuff, and they didn't realize what it was, but it brought that 
that spirit into this church. But today, that is being broken right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Witchcraft has no place in the house of God. If you 